Welcome everyone to another Storm TV interview and today we have the General Manager of the Manchester Storm, Mr Ryan Finnerty. Finner, how's the first couple of weeks in the new role been? Well, it's been, uh, it's been good, eventful, but it's been, uh, it's been good. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, obviously working with, um, working, you know, in, in kind of a new facet with a new, you know, kind of vision of, of what we want to do uh, off the ice and, and all the little things that we need to get done. Um, you know, the season really is upon us when, when you look at where we are, we're, we're kind of almost, you know, three weeks to a month behind with the season kind of getting pushed back. It, it just feels like we're, we're up against the clock already. So really no time to, to sit back and, and, and relax. That's for sure. And you mentioned the off ice stuff, but what has been the main focus so far? Well, obviously, we're the season ticket run is is our our most important thing. Um, you know, our our budgets are all based around season tickets. We we have to look at where we come in, uh, the uptake that we get for season tickets. A lot of it dictates the the budgets for next year. I mean, if if we get a great if we get a great uh, push, um, obviously everything everything uh, is a little healthier. If if we're if we're under, well, then it, it you got to tighten a little bit more. What goals do you have for the summer and for the season ahead? Well, I think coming off last year was a bit of a, a bit of a weird year. Um, obviously, you know, we didn't do as well as we, we wanted to. Um, I think we, we recognize the areas that we, we, we failed on. Um, and, and this year, I think it's a lot, um, it's a lot different than the previous season with COVID hanging over our head and taking, you know, maybe, being overcautious with with COVID and not getting caught out because of the uh, the impact it had the year before, you know this year we feel fairly confident that you know a full season ahead um, allows us to prepare in, in 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 a normal fashion. Where last year I think we were a little bit, you know, we were a little uh, conservative, uh, let's say on um, on getting too extended just because we we did get caught out pretty bad the year before. Uh, and again, it was, you know, the uncertainty even through the summer of whether we'd get a full season. It, it, it did, you know, unfortunately kind of hamper a lot of the stuff we wanted to do. But nonetheless, um, you know, we didn't get the job done on the ice and, and, and that's got to be the main focus for us. And like I said, this year now I, I can, um, you know, 100 percent support and my, my job to raise as much money for the club to to allow Ginner to have the resources he needs to put a, a quality team on the ice. So you're taking the decision to move upstairs as full-time GM. What led to the decision to stand down from coaching? Well, I think the, um, the a lot of people don't know it, but the the idea was if COVID didn't happen, that was, I was probably going to move up anyways. That was kind of the year I came back last year. Uh, I always joke that, that nobody wants my salary. So I came back last year. Um, you know, a lot of it was, was for financial reasons, really, just to, to you know, coming out of COVID again, it, we just wanted to be ultra careful of what we did and, um, you know, very conservative because we, we didn't get a lot of support. We didn't get any government support. I, I hear about all these great programs, but we certainly didn't, uh, we didn't get a whole lot. So we, we had to eat a lot. And, um, you know, my, my vision always was to kind of coach my way in, into this role, um, knowing full well that, you know, I wanted, you know, I think this club needs a, a, a bit of a face off the ice. We need that attention off the ice. We've, we've got some great support staff. Uh, we've got guys now have been with us for a number of years, you know, and I think we're, we're, we're starting to understand the, the market a bit better, but it's, it's one of those things where it, it's, con it's constantly shifting, shifting, um, you know, in, in the sports world, nothing is, there, there is no real map that you follow for success. You got to be able to kind of, kind of maneuver and, and there's a lot of variables that come at you. So, you know, we're, we're excited uh, moving into this year um, with Ginner at the helm. I think, um, you know, I'm a big believer in karma. I think, you know, obviously Ginner having that horrible injury that, that pretty much ended his career, you know, uh, at such an early age at the pinnacle of his career allowed him to kind of step right into this coaching role, which Ginner has always, he's always wanted to coach. That's what he wants to do. Uh, after hockey it was always a dream I don't think it ever he ever thought it would come this soon but you know neither did I when I got an opportunity neither did, did, did Kiefer or Andrew Lord Danny Stewart Todd Dudium <laughs> I mean you go down the list of the guys that had success 
And the one thing we all have in common is they understand the league. They understand the country, the UK, the, the, the people, they understand the pressure. Um, you know, you, you could draw a laundry list of guys that have failed with far, far better resumes than any of these guys I, I just mentioned. Because it, you got to adapt when you come here. We don't do things the normal way. We don't have a playoff. You don't, you don't, you don't, you know, feel good going into playoffs. Playoffs last for forty-eight hours. You know, it, it's a it's a fifty-four game grind, and uh, you know, and a game in October in Fife on a Wednesday is just as important as a game in April. So, I think I think a lot of that too. I mean, you saw. I mean, I could just sit here and name off. Uh, you know different situations all the way down to, to Cardiff with, with Jared Scaldi. And I know Scaldi very well. He's a great coach. I had him. He coached me. I mean, he's a great coach. And for whatever reason, it didn't work in Cardiff, you know, and then they appoint a, a player um, just to take the, just to step in and boom, like the guys adapt, they, they go in a playoff. You know, this was a team that was, was heading probably, you know, limping towards the end being where they were, you know, they couldn't move up. They couldn't move down. And, and, Killer made a made a change. It was a ballsy move at the time, but Dupont steps in with Franny, and you know they they go win a playoff. And they obviously had the horses, and they had a good team, but they felt that they needed to do something, and and that team responded. You know, so I think it's you know I, I see a lot of the noise of all uh, you know we 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 want to experience this and experience that, and I get it, but um, I don't know. I'm I'm going to weigh on my 12 or 13 years in this league and being through every possible facet, as opposed to somebody who's writing on a freaking fan for him. I was going to ask about, about it last week, but I'm interested to know your side of it. How did him joining you on the bench last season come about? Well, I knew he wanted to get in coaching. Uh, we wanted to keep him involved. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> it wasn't a situation where he was going to be out for a month or a couple of weeks or we knew that that was probably it uh, in that, that Coventry game. Um, and we, um, we wanted to get them involved. I mean, it's a, it's a little different. We don't normally get players involved when, when they're out, but that situation. And then Matt came into the role. Um, you know, what I saw was a guy that came into the role, just kind of, you know, obviously a little down um, at a, at a, at a week or two where he, he, he kind of came to the realization with, with the fact that, you know, my career is done through injury, which is not easy for anybody. Um, and then just kind of turned the page and was like, Hey, like I, I want to absorb everything and just went strength for strength for strength. And I knew what I was planning on doing. So I gave, I, you know, a lot of the, a lot of guys, it was funny. A lot of people did notice that, that Matt was starting to take on a bigger role. Um, not everyone. But we, we started to give Matt, uh, I started to give Matt a, like more and more rope, more and more rope. And, you know, because I, I knew that this was a, a great opportunity for him. Um, I knew where I was heading and I knew what we were going to be looking for. And, you know, I, I, I was just impressed. Um, it's not an easy thing to go from a teammate to to what would be considered a, a coach or, you know, and it's it's a very, very, I, I did it. And, and you know, I, I look back and think, well, geez, I could have done that a hundred times better. But it's a weird situation when you go from a teammate to to a, a position of power, and, and that's what we kind of put Matt in, and he did a great job. So he kind of got a really good apprentice uh, apprenticeship, and you know what? He also got to see the other side of the game. He got to see the business side of the game. He got to see the um, the coach player dynamic and, and what we see compared to maybe what players see. I mean, I, I remember when I was a player, I was thinking, "Geez, a coach is really hard on that player," you know. And then you step back and go, oh, I get it. I, I can see, I can see now looking back from above why why he's so hard. But player to player, you're you're just a good teammate. You you know you just want to do that as as a coach. You want the best for the for the for the team first and foremost, and then the individual secondary. Um, and um, sometimes you see the game differently than than players do. And I think Matt kind of quickly learned that. Like, okay, this is. This is how it is. I, 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 you know, and I think you know, being so fresh, um, I think the way it's going now, play guy, you got to bring in guys that understand the young player that can communicate and have time with the young guy that have time, you know, to to make sure that everybody's you know feeling warranted and feeling good about their situation. I think there's a lot of psychology that goes involved in coaching now, where before it was just show up, dictate, and they go play. 
uh, now there's there's a lot more to it. These these players want more information. They you know, and I think he's um, he's a guy that understands that. He's kind of on the cusp of the old and new school, and you know, I'm and I'm excited. I'm excited for him. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, and, you know, I think you know, I, I read all the comments and I, I kind of laugh about him because you know, you got everybody. Everybody has their say on Twitter and on social media and. You know, I think it's uh, or on fan forums, and my my opinion of it is that, you know, it, uh, how do you say this in a PC version? Uh, I think there's some very good conversations that I that I read about, and then there's just some horrible, horrible comments that I wish we could like have a one to one conversation for face to face. But it, it it's just a it's it's just such a toxic environment in today's world. And, and my job is like, I, I really don't care. I love confrontation. You know, we, we want to be accountable when we're great and accountable when we're bad, but I'm, we're not going to put up with the social media side of, of, of sports. It's just so toxic right now. And we, we don't have to deal with that. We're not, you know, we're not, I don't want anybody to deal with that. My job is to protect and, and make sure that we give Matt the, the opportunity for success and, and, and the funding and the money and to have success. And my job is to keep all the crappy noise away from him and let him focus on his job because it is, it's, it's overwhelming at times. And honestly, you see it, you see it at every level. It can get to people, you know, you got some, you got some guy that hides behind a, you know, a fake account and, and just berates people for fun. Um, it, it's, it's horrible. It's horribly, you know, it's a horrible aspect to have. And you're seeing it now at, at every level. It's just, we just don't have any time for it, you know? And and the thing is that those the the small minority don't speak for the for the fan base, and I think they think they do because they get the most attention. Negative attention gets the most attention. So I'm really looking forward to that because like you know it, it is it, it's draining and and you just want to you want to silence those because we have we have such a, a great fan base, and we're looking to grow that fan base. And I think my my job is is to be the welcome face to be the guy that you know if people have concerns or questions they go to me. On game night, say well, I want them to feel comfortable coming to me and talking to me if there's an issue. I, you know, I just want to be that guy. Neil Russell did a great job. You know, he had the ability to do a great job in the first couple of years, and and I want to continue that role because I think I think that's what we need is, you know, somebody that you know. I think people don't really know me now because as a coach, you stay away from everything. Um, and as a, you know, as in this position now, especially with our rank and the way we are, you know, I'm looking far far. I'm looking really. I'm really excited just to kind of get more involved in the day to day and, and understanding the the fan base and, and what they're looking for and what they see on a game night. I mean, what, what you see from behind the glass from behind the bench would be certainly a lot different than who knows, maybe I'm going to be the guy going, Hey, this isn't good enough. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it, it's just, it's just such a, it's a different role that I'm excited for. And I think, you know, obviously I, I've, I've done everything in this league and been around and, you know, I know, I know how important it is for, for our fans to, to feel wanted and comfortable and, and more importantly, just have a say, somebody that they can go talk to. And I think that's kind of where, where I want to be to, to a degree, um, you know, and, and like I said, I, I, the negative side, you're always going to have it, but they can't, out, they can't drown out the, the positive, which is, which we have a, a great positive fan base. And, you know, from our Q and A, you can see, See that you know, and and, and um, you know the, the people that came out and supported our our uh, equipment sale. So I think that's that's kind of where I'm at. And you know, we're not looking for any cotton candy here. We're just we just want a, a fresh start and want our fans to believe in what we're doing and get behind us. We we you know we're not you know we want to compete with Sheffield. We've done it in the past, but we're our our limitations. You know you know we we play in a building that holds two thousand people. We right now getting you know fourteen fifteen hundred. And we're playing against teams that are getting six, seven thousand. You know, we have a long ways to go to close that gap. So we just want to, we just want to find ways and 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 streams where we can create revenue to put back in the clubs. I don't think people understand. I think people look at these clubs and think they're a cash cow for somebody. Certainly isn't the case. You know, there hasn't been one penny taken out of this club. Everything goes back in. We want to build, build, and build. But there's so many variables. Playing in a great city like Manchester comes at a high cost. I mean, our housing budget's the highest in the elite. You know, um, our rent rent from you know our rent rent continues to go up. We have to pay that rent rent bill as opposed to the Dundee and Fife's who who play for free. You know, so they stand they they start the season out six figures ahead of us. So there there's we have to play a lot of catch up. Um, 
and I and I think our, we we need our fan base to understand that that this is this is a, a community not right now not not a profit club. We're we're we are fighting to to not only stay in the elite league but to compete in the elite league, um, to work with our venue to make it a better you know to, to not only invest on the ice but also invest off the ice to make it a better um, night out for them. I mean these these are important factors for us. Obviously we can only control what we can control, um, but I think they we are willing to listen and work and, and understand where, where the areas of concerns are to, to work with, with our, with Planet Ice and, and, and make it a, a better venue, because obviously the more people that go in that venue, the better it is for them, the better it is for us. And, and I think we just need them to understand that we have a great relationship with, with Planet Ice. Um, you know, we certainly, they, they want, you know, more from us. We want more from them. That's just business. And, and that's always going to be the fight no matter what, but we have a very healthy relationship. Um, and, and we just need to continue to work together to get, you know, to make it the best game night atmosphere out there. And the one thing we do have is a very unique building that you won't find to watch this level of professional hockey. I mean, the, the days of standing on the glass in North America to watch this level is, is you know, 10 years removed. So the, uh, the ability to do that and, you know, we just, we just want to make it the best venue possible. We know that we have to you know, we have to do a few things. We have to make some improvements and, and that is part of our plan, but we do need some patience because, you know, can't just snap our fingers and, and get everything done. Can you talk any more about those improvements that you've just mentioned? Like what we could do, what fans can expect on match nights in terms of the rink and the facilities? Yeah, I mean, obviously right now, everything is, is a plan. We, we are fast forward in, in a digital clock, you know, a uh, proper, not, not TVs. We are looking at, at securing a, a contract for a digital clock and uh, looking at two or three different options that um, we're closing in on. Again, these, these are these are not, you know, we're looking at 20 plus thousand dollars, pounds for, for these kind of things, sorry, um, that we'd have to, you know, inherit just again, and just be, you know, for, for the fan purpose. Um, we're looking at, obviously we're working with PI to, to to look at what we can do with obviously the bathrooms and, and all that to, to make it that, um, you know, we're, we know that service maybe in the bar, we want to try to see what, what we can help with that. If there's a way to kind of get the faster turnover. So, and, you know, uh, these are all areas that, that Planet Ice understand and are open to there, there is no, you know, tension between it. Um, and, and just listening, you know, and obviously just being for me, just being on the ground floor and, and seeing a, a, a match night take place from, you know, doors open to doors closed from a, from a fan journey. There's going to be some, some learning for me. There's going to be, you know, understanding. And, and I think the more conversations I have with people, the more, the more ability I can have to, to talk to our, our fan base and, and understand, you know, what they would like and what they would see. And, you know, cause we, you know, we want to make that a, a very unique, cool experience all by you know it's not going to be a, a five-star thing but it is also it, it's the manchester storm it's us it's what we have it's the only rink in manchester we make it our own and you know but we want to make it as uh, comfortable and as exciting and and so that everybody leaves there going hey we had real good value for money at the end of the day and, and obviously winning helps a lot of that but it's not everything you know people people pay good money to come through the door to watch us and we want to make sure they have a good night so you say you want to be more visible on match nights, you want the fans to come and speak to you. Is there anything that they shouldn't come and speak to you about? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I, yeah, I've had a few comments and emails already. So, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I, I, I think I think um, <clears throat> I think I'm open to everything. You know, I understand. I've been around. Like I said, I've met every type of fan. Um, you know, we've made great friends. Some of my best friends are, are fans from when I played in Sheffield and Glasgow and, you know, people that come and support. So, um, no, I, absolutely. I, I think it's, I think it's important to just understand your fan base, but I think it's important for them to know that we certainly are not the, uh, I'm certainly not the guy that's going to just tend to the loudest mouth in the, in the group and, and the negative noise. I, I, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't think there's any time for it. I think, I think there's a time and place for to be upset and negative and, you know, team's not doing well. You paid your money, absolutely. Cause issues that aren't there just to hear yourself talk or create conversation on a board Friday night. Yeah, I got no time for that. Um, and and like I said, I I really don't care. If <laughs> uh, I'm I'm happy to voice my opinion. We we want good support. You know, this this tailoring to, you know, you, you see it all the time. Like, 
we're just not going to have any of that negative noise because it's draining on, on the fan base. People want to come. They want to feel, they want to feel entertained. They want to have a, a safe night out. They don't want to listen to some guy swearing and yelling. And, you know, this isn't, this isn't the football crowd. This is a family friendly uh, sport. Um, and, and we want people to feel appreciated and, and that's it, you know, and, and we have, we don't have the easiest environment to do it, but at the same time, we do have a very unique, cool, close knit environment. And if we can make that, uh, a positive uh, experience for everybody. That's what we want to do, you know. And I think that's that's my that's my goal. My mindset's just to kind of be roaming around, and you know, maybe I'll sell some fifty fifties. I like I said, I'm I'm a, I'm just a regular guy that that loves hockey and been around, and and I'm 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 excited in this. And you know, commercially, I I want to get to know people and what they do because I want whoever they work for to sponsor us. You know, I think we have a very unique. We got some really cool ideas. For fan engagement, we have some really cool ideas to bring whoever you work with, offset maybe a Christmas party and come have it at the storm on us and, and kind of work some deals out where potentially we're saving you some money and we get some new eyes on our game. And we know that, you know, I always said people walk into hockey, they either, either hate it, it's not for them, or they absolutely love it and can't believe they haven't been before and come back. I know we don't have, I feel like there is no like, it was okay. It's either yes or no, I find, in, in the UK. And a lot of times when, when people come and, and they have a good experience and they're with the right people, they, they love it. It's so different than what you can get anywhere else. It's so different than football, than rugby, than cricket. It's just so, so different what we provide. And, and the action on the ice and being that close, I think, um, I think it's such a unique experience. And finally, do you have a message to the Storm fans while we wait for the new season? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we want to turn the page. I think, um, you know, I think we, we've been building for five years. We, we've had some great times. We've been, you know, we're always going to be a roller coaster team, unfortunately, just, you know, but everybody is, that doesn't hold the title at the end of the year. Everybody under Belfast is now looking at what they can do better. Um, I think we just, we, we want some belief and some support. Um, we want to get that, that good feeling back. We understand that there is responsibility and less but we need the ticket uh season ticket drive to to keep going and we want to set record numbers there um we've got some we've got some awesome stuff coming online for merch that i think is um it's going to set us apart I, I i hold my hand up if i'm wrong but i think we're going to probably have the best merchandise uh range in the league um we're, we're securing some deals now that are are, are just fantastic I, I can't wait that we can kind of showcase that and um you know i think uh i think we we got some new sponsors coming in some new blood coming in we we just we just want that involvement we just want that feel good factor coming back to the club uh especially leading up to the season where we're trying to bring some european teams in right now for for exhibition securing that um you know just we're just kind of got so many irons in the fire right now and i think it's it's you know we took all about maybe two days off uh after the playoff final and, and got back to work. I mean, everybody's, everybody's, uh, everybody's excited to climb the ladder again and, and see what we can do. And, and ultimately my job right now, um, you know, I, I'm giving Ginner my, my ultimate support. I want him to build his own brand, his own team. He's got no pressure to, to do anything on, uh, on the hockey side. My job is just to surround him with capital to work with and build it with good budgets and, um and and the support knowing that you know we got a good fan base that that is uh is is ready to fight with us and come back with us and i think that's that's kind of where we're at it's a it's kind of david versus goliath thing but we, we we really feel confident in 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 where we're going and what we're doing i think you know we're into now our fifth or sixth season you know with, with covid involved so we we're starting to you know, we've, we've got a pretty good, we've got a pretty good uh, grasp of, of how everything works. I think we're the longest owner since in the, uh, since the end, the end days. So, you know, I think we're just looking to get that buy-in from the fan base and, and, and get them to understand, I, you know, I don't, but I hear all these things about money grabs and that, and, and it's just, it, it actually just pisses me off because everything goes into the club. Like oh, we are, we are, we are doing everything in our power to keep our head above water and to, to build. And I think that's what our fan base needs to understand is that this isn't a money maker. None of us are, I mean, none of us ever got involved, but Hey, Manchester Storm's going to be a huge money maker. Let's get involved. It's, it's about competing and developing a brand in, in probably the toughest city in, uh, in Europe, you know, with, or with what we have and two fantastic football teams and, 
everything else you know we got to compete with with a lot of a, a lot um a lot of noise so i for us it's that's what it is i mean you know jamie and i are committed to, to just putting everything back in and growing and growing and growing and you know and, and continuing to to hopefully increase the fan base and increase uh, increase the sponsorship you know all the things that bring revenue in uh look at new and innovative ways to to bring revenue in um and i think now you know maybe since we came in um i i think our fans have somebody to go to you know because we have some fans that are extremely intelligent that that have great businesses that work for great businesses and and you can never stop learning in this in this in this sport and now i think hopefully our fans feel comfortable enough to, to you know because everybody will have new ideas and good ideas and some bad some good and, and we want to just be able to kind of be that that uh, that brand that, that listens to our fan base and and you know grows with them and, and they grow with us and so I think that's that's kind of the the new era is just becoming more of a, a, a tighter knit um, you know to to our fan base and, and getting a better understanding of what that looks like from the outside looking in and and just trying to improve day to day. Well, Ryan, we do, we do wish you the absolute best over the summer and hopefully we'll see uh, the rewards come in the new season. But uh, thank you for joining That's us. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. Thanks, man. And then, hey, and uh, and they got to come out and support Dave and his walk. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm coming on Saturday. We got to come there. out, yeah. We, I just need to figure out the best more. time because I imagine you'll want support later rather than earlier. Well, any support is good support. It's, he's, he's an incredible guy. He's a huge volunteer for us. I mean, he's, he's doing an, uh, a fantastic job. So I'll be there on Saturday. So yes, uh, to start him off, I don't think I'm going to be there 24 hours, but I'll be there at the, <laughs> yeah, I am not need to speak to him about best time, but if anybody yeah. who's not aware of this, so Dave Fair, brother, one of the Manchester storm stewards is doing a 24 hour walk in hockey kit, nonstop. <laughs> 24 hours I didn't tell him he was mad but uh, yeah he's raising, he's raising a lot of money for, for charity um, so if anybody can help him out um, he, I think he's got a Just Giving page um, and if anybody wants to go along um, if you look him up on Twitter um, I'm sure when we put this out we can put details of the and, to on as well but, and uh, to go yeah. back to our, to our to our hopeful we get it in in time uh, digital scoreboard we are looking for advert sponsorships so if you're working for your company go beat up your boss and tell him to give <laughs> us a call uh, very Absolutely. good prices now we are that's that's our big thing right we got it we got to make it work we got to you know we're outlaying it so we gotta we want to portray we got one in, what is it 1.4 million viewers or 1.2 million viewers going through that arena so this is my little pitch to the to the fan base get in touch <laughs> with me. we want your spot we want to see your company you work for we got great deals on it. No, um, but yeah, no, absolutely. Um, thanks for the time. Yeah. You know, I imagine we'll be doing a lot of these over the years and or over the year and catch up. That was you. Thank you, sir. Okay. And we'll see everybody at Dave's walk. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> right. Bye everybody.